Hi, welcome to Orozco's Lectures. I am Jose Orozco, and these are my lectures. This lecture is a Calculus 2 lecture. I hope you enjoy it. This is chapter 9.9, .9, which is representation of functions by power series. And here, as name would imply, what we want is we want to start with some sort of function and end up with some sort of power series. And what was the power series? Well, the power series was the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n times x to the n, right? And well, this is actually here, this one, we just said this is a power series, but let's compare this. To this other kind of series, a r to the n. All right, and well, over here, this is a geometric series, right? And we know something about geometric series. These converge when the absolute value of r is between zero and one, right? That we know about geometric series. So. And what would it converge to? It could converge to a over 1 minus r. So what we're actually going to be working with here is functions of this format, some sort of fraction that look like that, to get it into a power series. All right. So let's get some examples in. So a. Let's say that I said, well, we're going to find the power series. Find a power series. For f of x is equal to 12 over x plus 4 centered at c is equal to 0. All right, so here we go. So, in here, if I take a look at our the convergence of a power series, right? If I take a look at that fraction and I compare it with this fraction, this is 12 over x plus 4. Well, what we want to make sure to do here is we want to put this in the same format. So we want to convert this fraction to look as much as possible as this one over here. And well, how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do here is I have the constant minus a variable. So I'm going to change it to be 4 plus x. But I want minus, right? So that minus is the same thing as saying minus negative, right? This plus right over here. That's a minus negative. And look at that. We're getting closer. What else do I need? I need to have that 1 there. So how do I do that? Well, this 4 needs to become a 1. So I'm going to multiply by 1 over 4 over 1 over 4, right? Because this right here, this multiplication, doesn't change anything. It's just multiplying by 1. And now, well, 12 times 1 fourth, that's 3. 4 times 1 fourth is 1 minus negative x times 1 fourth. It's negative x over 4. And look at that. Now, now we've got it in the form that we wanted it. And in here, now we're going to say, well, a is equal to 3, and r is equal to negative x over 4. So now, well, since we know what the geometric power series is, right, we call that a over 1 minus r was um, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a r to the n, right? So in this case, what we're going to say is that we get the series from n equals 0 to infinity of a 3 times r negative x over 4 to the n. And there you go. That's our power series. All right. Um, now, the next question here is, is this centered at 0? Well, yeah, this is definitely centered at 0, right? Because I have x plus 0 or x minus 0, whichever way you want to think about it. Um, but it's just centered at 0. But the next thing we would want to know here is, well, when would this converge? And well, recall that we're comparing this to a geometric series, right? So when we have that, well, 
In geometric series, we know that it converges when the absolute value of r is less than 1. So we're going to use that for this. This is going to converge when the absolute value of negative x over 4 is less than 1, right? And here is where the next part for our center is important. Because what we want to have here is, since it's just centered at c, we want absolute value of x is less than r. Right? Well, that's our radius of convergence. And in here, well, what are we going to do? Multiply both sides by 4, and I end up with absolute value of x is less than 4. So that is our radius of convergence. And now that I know my radius of convergence, since I know we're centered at 0, we know that our interval of convergence, so hold on here, this tells us that the radius of convergence is equal to 4. All right, the interval of convergence would be, well, from negative 4 to 4, right? And we don't have to check the endpoints here because, well, we know that it has to be strictly less than, than, than 1 there. So you definitely cannot include either of the endpoints. All right, next one. B. Let's say that I said, well, it's semi second instructions. But now we've got f of x is equal to uh, 2 x, 2 over x, excuse me, 2 over x. But now we're going to be centering at 1. All right. So let's see. We want to have a over 1 minus r, right? Something in that format. Because again, we want to use. We want to be able to manipulate this uh, from the geometric series. So let's see. How can we do that? Well, we have 2 over x, right? And, well, since we want to center things at 1, that means that, and perhaps I'll put it on the side here, that means that what we actually want is somewhere to have x minus c is less than r, right? That's when we look for our radius of convergence. So what we really have, what we really want this absolute value of x minus 1 is less than r. So I'm going to force to have an x minus 1 in here somehow. And how are we going to do that? Well, there's two things you can do to any math problem. One of them was add 0, right? Recall that the other one is multiplied by 1. But here we're going to add 0. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to say is x minus 1 plus 1. Minus 1 plus 1 at 0. Why am I using 1? Because I want to have I want to have a 1 over here. Right? So at that point, what I can do is group that x minus 1. Right? And I can rewrite this as 2 over 1 plus x minus 1. All right. Cool. But now, I need a minus. I need to have a minus. So in here, we need to manipulate this even further. So we're going to have 2 over 1 minus negative of x minus 1 all right and i'm going to leave it as that because now now we've got our our form right where a is equal to 2 and r is equal to the negative of x minus 1 i'm going to rewrite this or i'm going to think about this as negative 1 times x minus 1 you'll see why in a second now since we already have it into that format, now we can apply the geometric series, right? And recall that it was a r to the n, right? And in here, we can rewrite it now as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a to times r, which is negative 1 times x minus 1 to the n. All right. At this point, well, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. I have a product to a power there, so I'm going to rewrite this as the sum from 0 to infinity of 2 times negative 1 to the n times x minus 1 to the n, All right? Now, I write it this way because, well, that is technically an alternating series, right? Um, in fact, let's get a couple of terms here. What we just found here is that 2 over x was... The summation from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 times negative 1 to the n times x minus 1 to the n, which this part can be expanded to be, um, well, this 2 I can pull it all the way to the outside. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. 
there's a two. So we have two times, well, plug in zero. Negative one to the zero is one. X minus one to the zero is one. Plug in one. Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you what this becomes. Negative x minus one to the one. Plus x minus one squared. Minus x minus one cubed. Plus x minus one to the fourth. So on and so forth. Forever and ever. All right. And how do I do that so quick? Well, we have an alternating series. And here the power series is going up by one at a time. Right. Now. The next question is, what is the radius of convergence? Well, in here, recall that we need to have this piece right here, x minus 1, our radius. We want it to be less than 1. And, well, it's already set to that format, right? Because we're centered at 1, and because of geometric series, this piece right here, must be less than one done so what does this tell us that our radius is one cool what is the interval of convergence well the interval of convergence well we're centered at one with a radius of one so we're going to go from um, zero to two All right because again we're centered at one maybe i'll write it this way we're centered at one and we have a radius of one so this value here is 2, this value here is 0. All right, cool. Next one. So that was B. C. Let's say that I had f of x being um, 5 over 2x minus 3. And here we're going to have our center being negative 3. All right. So here we go. Since our center is negative 3, well, what this tells us, recall that to find our interval of convergence, we need to have x minus c, this means our radius of convergence, x minus c to be less than r. So in here, well, what would that look like if I'm centered at negative 3? It would be x plus 3 less than r. It's less than r, right? Because it's minus negative, right? Minus negative 3 is plus 3. So that means that that's what I want to have somewhere in here. Well, I don't, I don't currently have that. Let me rewrite this so it looks better. There was 2x minus 3. There we go. That looks way better. But I need, to, I need to have an x plus 3 somewhere in there. So let's see how we can rewrite that. All right. So in here, let's see. We can rewrite this as 2 times x plus 3 minus 3. And then we minus 3 in there. Notice that what I'm doing there is I'm adding 0. Because again, there's always two things we can add to do. That we can do to any problem. Add 0 and multiply by 1. So that doesn't change anything. Right? Except the way we look at this. So we need to have now by this 2 is out here. So we have an x plus 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. All right, um, that's getting closer because recall that what we want is eight over one minus r. So let's uh let's rearrange this. So I really have five over negative nine plus two times x plus three. Well, we don't want a negative nine, right? We don't want a negative nine. We want the one. So let's multiply this whole thing times negative one ninth over negative one ninth there overall i'm multiplying by one right but i'm doing that so that i can make this negative nine into a positive one so at that point we say well five times negative one ninth is negative five ninths on the bottom negative nine times negative one ninth is positive one positive times a negative is negative two times x plus three times one over nine just gives me that piece right there Right, and now, now that we have it into that format, now we can go ahead and use our geometric series, right? And here, our a is equal to negative five ninths. Our r is equal to um, two times x plus three over nine. 
Ah, uh, let's write that a little bit differently. I don't like that. Let's do two times two nine times x plus three. Yeah, that looks better. But anyway, so now now that we have that, we can rewrite it like I said into a geometric series, which again was the series from zero to infinity of a r to the n. In this case, that's a series from zero to infinity of a, which is negative five nines. Um, times r, which is 2 9 times x plus 3, and then that to the n. All right, so that is our series there. Um, now for our radius of convergence, well, recall that what we need to have here is that the absolute value of this piece right here, absolute value of 2 9 times x plus 3 is less than r right but we need to make sure that we have in this format for our radius of convergence x plus 3 is less than r so i'm going to multiply both sides by 9 halves to get rid of it from here so i have the absolute value of x plus 3 oh sorry not, not less than r less than 1 and it's less than 1 because we were doing a geometric series the radius blah 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 okay we're back to we're, we're back up to speed multiply both sides by 9 halves and I end up with 9 halves on that side. All right, cool. So that's my radius of convergence. But, well, yeah, so here this tells us that our radius of convergence is 9 halves. Cool. Interval of convergence. The interval of convergence, well, we're, we're centered at uh, negative 3, right? So we're centered at negative 3, so we can, if we go this way, we add 9 halves. If we go the other way, we subtract 9 halves. And well, I'll spare you the arithmetic, but negative 3 plus 9 halves is um, positive 3 halves, and negative 3 minus 9 halves is negative 15 halves. So this gives us that our interval convergence is negative 15 halves to 3 halves. All right. All right, so now <clears throat> let's uh, let's discuss some operations or some properties of operations from the power series. So operations of power series. So let's say that you have well, let f of x. be a power series right and let g of x be equal to a different power series so this is a sub n this is b sub n x to the n all right now in here what we can do is if i put if i do f of kx right if i plug in kx here I can just go ahead and plug it in into this side. So I end up with the summation of a sub n kx to the n, which gives me the summation of a sub n uh, k to the n x to the n. Next thing. So that's if I plug it in with a constant there. If I plug it in with an exponent x to the capital n uh, let's uh let's use a different exponent i don't want to use too many ends let's do k x to the k so this is going to give me a series of a sub n times x to the k to the n right let me just plug it into that and well, what does that do that gives me a series of a sub n times x to the kn. Ooh. Lastly, since we know that f of x, well, if we have f of x plus or minus u of x, we can just go ahead and replace it with the respective series, respective series. So we have the series of a sub n x to the n plus or minus the series of b sub n x to the n and 
that can also be rewritten, right? Because we know that um, we can essentially factor out a series here, the summation. And since they both have an x to the n, we can write it as a sub n plus or minus b sub n times x to the n. All right. Now, um, a quick note here. These operations may change um, the interval of convergence of the power series, right? Of the resulting series, maybe I should say, of the resulting series. Right, so that's something that you need to keep in mind whenever we do these kinds of operations. So, all right, so let's see. Let's do an example in general here. So let's, we're still finding power series, right? So find a power series for f of x is equal to negative two over x squared minus one. All right, so here we go. The very first thing I see here is that this is not exactly in the same format that that we've had things in before, because the previous three examples, I did not have a square there. So let's see what we can do. Well, in here, this negative two over x squared minus one, that's the same thing as saying negative 2 over x plus 1 times x minus 1, right? And in here, we know from, uh, from partial fractions that we can rewrite it as a over x plus 1 plus b over x minus 1. And now look at these. These are much closer to the format that we were uh, interested in, right, for the, for the geometric stuff. So... If I figure some stuff out here, well, I'm going to spare you some details here. In other words, I'm going to leave it to you to figure out how I'm going to get the following part. This is actually equal to 1 over 1 plus x. I'm just changing the order here. Um, plus 1 over 1 minus x. And again, just changing the order there. So, again, from here to here, partial fractions. fraction decomposition all right so now um so you want to find a power series for that and i should have said centered as zero okay now in here notice that i have the sum of two of these things both of those kind of look like a geometric format right if i have one over one plus x i can rewrite this as one over one minus negative x and from geometric series, here our a is 1, our radius is, neg is negative x, so we have this, the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over, wait, what, no, 1 times negative x to the n, right, our a is 1. And similarly, 1 over 1 minus x would be, well, right away, it's just a series from a equals 0 to infinity of just 1 times x to the n, right? <clears throat> but now, that's each of those separately, right? Um, perhaps the color coordinate these. So in here, this was one thing, and this other stuff was another. Alright, so now, now I can continue with the problem, um, as far as finding the power series, because this gives us now that a power series is this, the sum of the blue one, plus the sum of the yellow one, so the sum of the blue one, so from 0 to infinity of negative x to the n, plus the sum of the yellow one, from 0 to infinity of x to the n, alright, 
and well we know from the properties above that we can rewrite this as the series from n equals 0 to infinity of i'm going to write this as negative 1 to the n times x to the n plus x to the n right and since they both have an x to the n there we can factor that out so the series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x to the n let's uh let's see if we can simplify this somehow all right let's um let's see how that would play out if i plug in n equals zero so i have negative one to the zero that's one one plus one is two so i have two times x to the zero is one so it's just two all right cool plus next term plug in one negative one to the one is negative one negative one plus one is zero um and then x to the 1 is x plus plug in 2 negative 1 to the second is um, positive 1 positive 1 plus 1 is 2 times x to the second because n was 2 plus hopefully you start seeing what the pattern is here 0 x to the third plus 2 x to the fourth plus 0 x to the fifth so on and so forth, right? Plus 2x to the 6, so on and so forth forever. Getting rid of all these zero terms here, we can say this is 2 plus 2x squared plus 2x to the 4th plus 2x to the 6, so on and so forth. If I factor out a 2, I'm left with 1 plus x squared plus x to the 4th plus x to the 6, so on and so forth. And at this point, well, look at this. They're going up by powers of 2, right? All the exponents are just even. So what we can do here is we can rewrite this as 2 times the series um, from n equals 0 to infinity of, well, again, these are just even exponents, 2, 4, 6, and even here, that was an, uh, an exponent of 0. So there we go. That's our power series, right? That was the combination of those two. And now, now that we have that, well, what is our radius of convergence? Well, in here, we would know that our radius of convergence, radius of convergence, is when the absolute value of x squared is less than 1. But that's just really saying the absolute value of x is less than 1. Good, right? And, and that's fine, because what we wanted here was we wanted this, this to be centered at 0. So that works out pretty well. And the interval of convergence, well, since we centered at zero, it would be from negative one to one. All right. Next one. E. Let's say that we had um, f of x is equal to two ln of x and we're going to do this centered at one all right so we're looking for the power series for that well let's note something here note note that if i take the derivative of this f prime of x this is just two over x and we're still centered in at one. So centered at one. But from example B, we get the following. We get that two over x was equal to the series from zero to infinity of two times <coughs> negative 1 to the n times x minus 1 to the n and we had that the interval of convergence was from 0 to 2 all right um <clears throat> if you would like to go back and see that i recommend that you pause at this point so you can go see how we got that right there but otherwise let's continue so <clears throat> how am i going to use that 
Well, we know that in general, and this is another note, we know that in general, a function is equal to the integral of its derivative. So we're going to manipulate with that. We're going to we're going to play around with that because now, since that's true, well, we need to take the integral of this series, right? And that's easy because all we need to do here, we we already discussed how to find the integrals of, of of this series. It would be now the series from n equals zero to infinity of 2 times negative 1 to the n times x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, right? And technically, I should be saying here plus t, right? Because I'm integrating there. But there you go. That's what we get. Now, let's uh, check for the interval of convergence, right? So first, Let's find out about the radius of convergence. And to do that, well, since we're centered at 1, recall that we want to have x minus... Actually, hold on. We already know something here. We already know the interval of convergence for f prime. The interval of convergence is not does not change when we integrate. But, excuse me, the radius of convergence does not change when we integrate. So, we already have approximately what our interval of convergence is. All we need to do here is test the endpoints. So let's see what happens when we test um, x equals zero, right? Well, what would this become? Our function or our power series there becomes a series from n equals zero to infinity of two times negative one to the n times negative one to the n plus one over n plus one, right? Because I plugged in zero. And all right, so let's look at let's let's take a look at that by itself for a second. Um, we've got negative one to the n times negative one to the n plus one, right? In here, this is really saying negative one to the n times negative one to the n times negative one. Negative one to the n times negative one to the n is really negative one times. Well, let's do this way. That's just positive one. All right, right? Because uh, Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So this right here just becomes negative 1. So what we have here is a series from 0 to infinity of this whole thing we just said becomes negative 1. So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 over n plus 1. This, this diverges, all right? This diverges. and what we can do there is um, do a limit comparison with the series of um, 1 over n, all right? But, but it diverges. So that's at 0. Now let's check out the other endpoint at 2. So what we have now is a series from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 times negative 1 to the n times 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so I have 1 to the n plus 1. All right, this right here is just 1. That's not doing anything. And we have all of this over n plus 1. Well, this, this right here is actually convergent. And what we can do that there, well... You can do that with an alternating series test. So, alternating series. All right. And I'll let you figure out the details of those in there. But the point is that it diverges when x equals 0 and it converges when x equals 2. So, in here, this tells us that our interval of convergence now is from 0 to 2, including 2. Next one, um, f. Let's say that we want to do this for f of x is arctan of x, all right? And we're going to center it at 0, centered at 0. Well, let's note something here. 
let's note that f prime of x, the derivative of arctan, is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Right? And the next thing I want you to note here is let's say that I define the g of x to be equal to 1 over 1 plus x. Then in here, f prime of x will be the same thing as saying g of x squared, right? Because I would pl be plugging in x squared into g, and I end up with 1 over 1 plus x squared, all right? Now, why do I care about that? Because here, this function of 1 over 1 plus x, well, we know what that is actually equal to. This is equal to the series from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the n. And this is from, from example d. All right, if you want to see the details for that, the details for that I encourage you to go back and check that out. Um, and in there, we also found that our radius of convergence was 1, and our interval of convergence was from negative 1 to 1. All right, so how is that going to be helpful now? Well, we're also going to use the following fact that the integral, this means that f of x is the integral of f prime of x dx. All right, we're going to be using all of those things throughout this problem. Okay, so now, um, we know what f prime of x dx is, right, in general. That is 1 over 1 plus x squared, and that means plugging x squared into g. So what we have here, is the integral of g of x squared dx, which is the integral of this series. Um, when I plug in x squared, so let's do it this way. 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, which gives us now the integral of, well, this is the series associated with 1 over 1 plus x squared. So the series from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, x to the n, dx. And, well, we know how to integrate that already, right? Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So I have the series from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, and technically plus c, right? Um, because we were integrating that. All right. Now, now that we have that, well, that is our function, right? f of x, that's a series for our function. So maybe I'll write explicitly. So we have the series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the n plus 1. Oh, hold on. But we were plugging in x squared. Look at that. I did not account for that. So let's change that. All right, let's erase everything I have in here. All right, let's see, let's see how to fix that. If we were plugging in x squared, well, from our definition over here, this should be an x squared there. Maybe I'll do it in yellow so you see my mistake. x squared to the n. There we go. And I'll go back to writing in white. dx. All right. Now, at that point, at that point, now we can actually integrate that. There we go. So we have, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write that as the series, or well, the summation of the series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n, and then of that dx. All right. And then how do we integrate that? Well, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So I have x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, all right? And <clears throat> now, that's our series, okay? So that's f of x. So in other words, that's arctan. And at that point, well, we know that integrating does not, or does not change the, um, the radius of convergence, but it might do something for the interval, right? It might do something at the endpoints. So let's see what happens when we check those endpoints. So let's figure out what f of 1 is. So that's going to be the series from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 1 to the 2n plus 1 over 
2n plus 1. Well, 1 to the 2n plus 1 is just 1. So we just have the series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1. I will tell you that this converges. Right? It converges by um, alternating series. I will let you figure out the details to figure for, for that piece. But now let's figure out the other endpoint, negative 1. So that's a series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. All right, let's, let's look at that piece on the top there for a second. Negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the 2n plus 1. That's the same thing as saying negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the 2n times negative 1. And negative 1 to the 2n, that's just 1. So what we really have here is negative 1 to the n times negative 1. So that's negative 1 to the n plus 1. So what we can say here is that this entire thing, right, that was our entire numerator. We can rewrite this as the series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, which also converges by alternating series. So what we can say now is that our interval of convergence is from negative 1 to 1. All right. All right, so that is the end of 9.9. .9. Wasn't that fun? If you think I made a mistake somewhere, you're probably right. Tell me all about it in the comments. If you feel you learned something from me in this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but more importantly, share it. Share this video with your classmates. And remember, you don't have to like math in order to be good at it. But you do have to be good at it. I am Jose Orozco. Goodbye.